All right, today's topic, asset criticality as seen through the eyes of a plant manager or operations manager. Folks, uh, ex exciting topic. Uh, I wanna give some background first and then I'll get into how I, as a location manager uh, executive, uh, viewed asset criticality and how it was used in my plants. First of all, in background. Asset criticality is assigning a number or a rating on the importance of an asset, okay? Maybe that makes no sense, but typically this is made up of a calculation of two numbers. What's the probability something's going to happen and what's the severity of that event if it occurs? You know, probability means, you know, hey, does it happen once a week or does it happen once every 10 years, okay? Severity is, you know, somebody gets hurt, very poor, very badly hurt or environmental issue or you're down for three months, very severe, all the way to, hey, it's no big deal. We hit the reset button and we don't lose any production. You know, it's, it's, it's really not a big deal. We got an inline spare or something like that. So that's a severity. So you're, you're making a calculation. You uh, Typically what I've seen is a rating between one and six, one being very low severity and six being very high sever severity. Uh, and the same thing on probability. So the highest rating you can get is a 36 and the lowest you can get is a one. So using asset criticality allows you to focus on the numbers say above 25, you know, focus your resources, fo focus your actions, focus your decisions, focus make, you know, when you're doing PMs and you only could do 10 PMs, let's do them on the assets that it, that's gonna make a difference for us, okay? So that's kind of the thought behind asset criticality is, is focusing on the assets that are gonna make a difference from a, um, a severity standpoint and from a probability standpoint. You wanna focus your resources, your PMs, your condition monitoring, if you're gonna add continuous condition monitoring or if you only got a limited amount of resources and you can only do so many routes of, of lubrication or so many routes of IR, UE, um, uh, vibration, whatever, you focus on these critical assets because they matter. You know, others can go into detail more on this. If, you know, you just Google it or go, you know, uh, do a YouTube search on asset criticality, you'll have some reliability engineers talking about this, <laughs> not a uh, operations manager. So as a plant manager, how did I look at cr asset criticality? This is Joe Kuhn of Lean Driven Reliability, trying to bridge the gap between the best practices that you know you should be doing and the reality that you live in every plant. That gap is huge. I'm trying to make it simple based on my experiences in uh, deploying best practices in cultures, right? And you all know that culture eats your best practices in your plants for lunch, unless you have a plan and can work through it. Also note, hey, if you hit the uh, read more underneath this video and see some, I have a lot more verbiage <laughs> below the, this email description, uh, check out something that's very popular. I've got a link there to how to write a better resume based on my experience of being on the other side of the table interviewing people and how to just kill the interview, how to do a fantastic job and differentiate yourself inside the interview. I have a link to both of those. Uh, just take a look at those. Uh, I, I, and I've also have videos associated with that. And, and that's a, another personal mission of mine is to pr improve resumes and to improve uh, interview skills. So asset criticality, how do I view it? Here's the word of the day, it's leverage. Leverage, okay? Every single reliability tool is targeting waste. Okay, it's very important you understand this. When you're doing planning and scheduling, you're trying to be efficient about your execution of maintenance. When you're doing PMs, you're trying to increase the, uh, the, the longevity of an asset. You're trying to maintain its current level of production and current level of quality. You know, when you're problem solving, um, you, know, you know, are you getting the full life out of that asset? It's all waste, 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 waste. Wrench time, efficiency of people. Why do you kit? Why do you plan? You try to get the efficiency and wrench time of your crews up very high. But it's, it's in all, every single tool of reliability is targeting a waste. It's critical. You, can un, you need to understand that. Um, plan work, as an example, and, and I, I think everybody knows this, planned work is seven to 10 times more efficient than unplanned work. 
So you plan the job and you know, it, it could take one hour where, where if you just let that run to final failure, it'll take seven to 10 hours to make repairs and get you back to that uh, state. Uh, I think those numbers are low, but they're rules of thumb. So that's what leverage is. You do one hour of planned maintenance, you leverage, your lever bar is seven to 10 times longer um, than the action uh, or the impact on the result is seven to 10 times larger. You've got to maximize that opportunity. Um, also, you know, the opportunity cost. I keep talking about this. So, you know, when you're in emergency firefighting uh, mode, you're just doing reactive maintenance, that sucks the energy out of all your resources, okay? And that's all you do. And you may feel good at the end of the day because you you just, you, you know, kept one step ahead of the bear. But what would the world be like if you weren't doing reactive maintenance all day long? What could you innovate? What could you create? What new markets could you go into? That's the opportunity cost associated with reliability. Okay. Uh, you know, and I've talked about PMs, corrective work, PDM fines, all this kind of stuff. That is planned work, okay? And that's what you're doing to leverage, um, you know, the, the planned work versus reactive work um, um, leverage point. I'm sorry to use leverage too much there. But asset criticality, okay? Asset criticality is another leverage point, okay? By focusing on the critical assets, those numbers that are like, let's just say above 25 in your asset criticality, it directs the actions that you take that will be meaningful to the business, okay? You don't wanna, you know, it, it, there's you, your site may have a thousand PMs, but 800 of those PMs may be on non-critical assets. If, if you do a great job on them, nobody knows, notices, okay? But 200 of them may be on very critical assets that if you don't do that well, the business notices it in throughput and quality and unplanned downtime and just, plant chaos. So you want to focus on the 200 and the way to know which is which are the critical 200 is this asset criticality tool. Hopefully that makes sense to you. You know, it, it tells you what machines, hey, if we only can lubricate 20 machines because we're, we only have that much time in the month and for some reason you only have this many resources, which 20 machines do we want to lubricate? Which ones do we want to PM? Which ones do we want to make sure that we do uh, condition monitoring on because you know the the maybe your technician that does condition monitoring was you know sick or you know uh, for two weeks or on vacation let's say he was on vacation for two weeks only got two weeks to get the work done which assets do we want to make sure that we get asset criticality tells you which one to get you know examples of impact you know hey you focus on a production by bottleneck the reliability of a bottleneck production center you may improve that 10%. That's a big deal, okay? You know, your costs are down 20%. Your labor costs are down 10%. Your quality improved 10%. These are all things by focusing on asset criticality, working on those high numbers that impact the business. It, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, easily observed by the sponsors. And what this buys you is my second word of the day is credibility. You know, when you're driving all these changes and people notice them, you get credibility. And why do you need credibility? Credibility leads to sponsorship from up above. Believe me, you know, plant managers have bosses. We have expectations to perform. And, you know, when you have credibility and you come and you say, hey, I want an investment. I want to, you know, you've already delivered a million dollars to the bottom line through your focusing on asset criticality, then you come to me and ask for $300,000 to invest in something like a new lube room, like some new tools, like hiring another reliability engineer or another planner or a kidder stager or whatever it happens to be, you have credibility. And I'll say, yes, I may even come to you as a plant manager and say, hey, you've already saved a million dollars. How can you go twice as fast? What do you need to go twice as fast? Imagine that as you're trying to develop develop a reliability culture, your sponsor comes to you and says, I'm willing to spend more money. Uh, tell me where to spend it at. That's what credibility buys you. You know, a new lube room, you know, as an example, that, that's just one early in my career. Um, we asked for a new lube room after we've saved about $1.5 million it was. We asked for $100,000 to redo our lube after we had the credibility. Does that make sense? So every plant manager, reliability leader, um, 
R&M professional, they must be able to articulate why next week, why next month, why next year is going to be better. And one answer is leverage. The answer cannot be we're all just going to work hard. We're just got to we just got to do better. Leverage is the key, folks. You got to leverage planned and unplanned work, that 7 to 10 times ratio, and then also leverage asset criticality. Um, it, it's just huge, folks. It's very huge. Does this make sense to you? You know, the word of the day is leverage. When you think about asset criticality, think this is a way that we can leverage an action. We'll invest one hour and we'll get seven hours in return. We'll invest an hour and we'll get 10 hours in return. What that exact return is, you know, seven, 10, 20 times, that's not important. What it's important is it is leverage, okay? You could study this for a week and you're not gonna be right, but it, it makes sense to work on items that are gonna impact the business. So my challenge out to you is for next week, decide in your leadership team, do we have asset criticality? How are we going to get asset criticality? There's software packages that do this that you can buy. Folks, it's not that hard. You're making a matrix of one by six and one, you know, one by six this way, one by six this way, and putting in your assets. It's not that it's not that hard. We started off with a spreadsheet and it focused our efforts. I mean, it's really a no-cost solution to focus on what's important in your plan and take the emotion out of it and put a number on it. Okay, put a number on it. So hey, it's Joe out.